Hi everybody, Diane here and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to explore um, some gouache painting and I'm going to be doing a copy of a Gauguin painting of a Breton farm. This is a sketch I did about 10 years ago and it's based on a painting by Paul Gauguin. This one here, which is uh, entitled A Farm in Brittany. And since I live on a farm in Brittany, it's kind of uh, uh, apt, so to speak. We actually have buildings exactly like this on our land here. And uh, this is the scenery that you can see there is pretty much uh, what it's like around here where I live. So I'm going to have a go at starting that now. And this is the sketch I did. I did this in, um, I think this is a piece of hardboard MDF and I put um, watercolour ground or gesso on it and then um, this is a sketch that I did in acrylic, just an outline sketch um, prior to actually painting the picture. So let's see what happens when I start this. So looking at the, um, the painting I'm going to copy, the sky has got um, several different greys, it looks like it's been done in chalk, um, it's got yellow, it's got blue, it's got a nice mixture of colours and I'm not going to use too small a brush. I think maybe I'll start with this number 11 and see how that goes. And um, yes, so we will see. We are going along this road together. So. In gouache painting, you, you use quite a lot of white. Gen well, you don't have to, but you can do. And you um, don't expect the undercoat to show through, so to speak. And also, if it goes too dark, all you have to do is add more white. I'm just going to get a tube of white because I know I'm going to need that. And I think the white has dried out a bit. I use a lot of white gouache in um, my watercolour painting as well. So I've always got a tube of that. Yeah. So I'm going to use some of that here to soften up that sky. A little bit of blue in there. This is an absolutely completely different technique to what I use for watercolour painting. There's some um, yellowy, um, I suppose a sunny kind of colour. So here's a close up view of the sky that I've just painted using gouache. Um, it looks a little bit like one of my oil skies actually and I really love the way the strokes are loose and visible. Completely different from what you achieve with a watercolour sky of course, it has its own charm. One of the things that has to be remembered about gouache is that like watercolour, when it dries it changes its intensity slightly. The tricky thing with gouache is that the lights dry darker and the darks dry lighter so you tend to get less contrast um, but uh, if you take that into consideration while you're painting it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And I'm just um, painting in one of the trees in the background here on this painting. There's two trees, there's one which is kind of yellowish and uh, greenish underneath. I'm working with a very restricted palette here. I haven't actually got any pre-mixed greens because this palette um, dates from the days when I was a strong believer, and I still am, 
really in um, not using pre-mixed greens. So I'm making my brown, my uh, greens with um, yellow, blue, brownish colors and so on, which will give a more muted effect. Okay, so that's the first tree. Now the second tree is, and this is basically going to be the undercoat, of course and we probably have to come back into it later. And then the second tree is a dark green. I've mixed that from ultramarine, uh, burnt sienna, and uh, a sort of cadmium yellow color. So that's a dark tree in the background there. And then I'm going to use a bit of, um, yeah, a bit more ultramarine to make that even darker. And a bit more brown to make it darker still. And then I have a few dark touches there, and there's some, some reddish colour in there as well. So. Along the back here, that's the horizon line, and it's a kind of reddish green, the mixture. So I've got a, I'm having a problem here because it looks as if the background resist. It's going to be interesting. This doesn't, this isn't going to matter. I'm going to pick to go with it because I think I've left enough of it uh, white so that it, uh, it might even actually work rather well. So. We're putting in the horizon, trees on the horizon, and we give them a bit of a broken line. And then we've got a, a bright green line here next, going across. And then we have some red, which I think would indicate possibility of poppy fields, reddish brown. Nowadays that would probably be yellow with the rape, the rape of the countryside. And then we've got dark green again. So we're back to the ultramarine blue and the brown and the yellow. Make the dark green, which is behind the houses. This is giving a very interesting effect, and I'm not going to jump up and down and say I don't like it until until I don't like it because I know that I can fix whatever happens. We can call this multimedia if we have to. We might have to come in with some acrylic. But that's what we do, we do. Okay, so a bit more of the strong reddish over here between the trees. And then we have here, that is going to have to be done in acrylic. So now I'm going to look at the roofs of the houses, which Gauguin has painted in red, like that. 
which is interesting because around here all of these houses are just like this but the roofs are grey because they're made of they were slate and then the walls are bluish grey stone like that and then in the front we've got bright green again I'm going to use cobalt blue and cadmium yellow because that's the kind of colour they loved colour these painters, these impressionists they weren't afraid of slapping it, slapping it on And then in the front, in the foreground, it's not only green, but it's very bluish green here. And then right in the front, we've got orangey brown. So I'm going to mix my burnt sienna with orange, plenty of orange. And there we are. <coughs> oh, we need some darker um, green. Uh, yeah, it's going to be dark. And then in front of that one there's a very light a light yellow greenish yellow tree So I'm getting quite a lot of resistance from the acrylic underpainting so I'm going to have to figure out a way of fixing that um, and uh, then we will see this painting through to the bitter end as they say. So what I've done here is the bits where I couldn't get the gouache to stick to the underpainting I've covered them with um, watercolour ground the one I've got by Daniel Smith and let that dry and so basically I've covered over the unreceptive um, uh, acrylic paint with which I did the original sketch which was repelling the paint completely um, because I intended it to be an oil painting in the first place and so I've painted over that with watercolour ground for the purposes of this demonstration I don't know whether that's good technique or not I can't see any harm in it and now I'm coming in um, into the slightly damp watercolour ground. Some of it is still slightly damp, some of it's dry. And I'm painting gouache into that um, undersurface. And I'm going to complete this painting in uh, one go now. And I shall probably speed this up a little bit for you so that you can see how it went in, uh, without having to watch every single brush stroke. Now the thing with painting like this with gouache is that because it's opaque you do the exact opposite to what you do with watercolour, normal watercolour, if you're painting in this method. You can use gouache watered down and use it like watercolour. <clears throat> um, but what I'm doing here is I'm using it thickly and I'm uh, basically do, using, water, uh, using oil techniques. So I'm blocking in shapes. Um, getting the tones and the values right in the various different areas of the painting in, uh, with broad brush strokes and then as the painting goes on I will refine things as um, I'm painting over the top of what I put in the background and if I feel something has gone wrong and I need to lighten it or darken it I can do both, I can either go darker or I can go lighter um, I can paint over the top <coughs> and uh, change things in a way which with pure watercolour, with transparent watercolour technique, you can't do. 
So this, is, this gives a completely different effect. It's not light and ethereal. Is that a word? Ethereal? Yes, that's a word. Um, it's not light and transparent like uh, the usual watercolour technique. It's um, much more solid. It has a kind of, um, uh, well, it has an opacity which um, gives it real body. And it's quite fun. It's quite fun to, to do this and it makes a real change from, from watercolours. So as you can see, I'm just blocking in the different shapes and then I come in again with another colour and uh, add I to... I didn't catch that. Could thank you try again? Thank you, Siri. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Go away. Who says they're not listening to us? Um, yeah, so I get to this point and then I will um, begin to refine it a little bit by putting in things like the doors and the shadow underneath the roof and the shadows on the roof and so on. The wonderful thing is if it goes wrong, you can correct it. It's a bit like painting in acrylic, but the great thing about this versus acrylic is that it, when it dries, it's, um, you can still lift it. Whereas with acrylic, when it's dry and you have a ruined brush and you've got dried paint all over your palette that you can't get off and you have to buy another one. Um, I <clears throat> find the colors in acrylic very harsh as well on the whole, although I'm sure they're improving all the time. Um, but gouache is a much more organic feel to it and uh, when you paint it like this. So you have the best of both worlds really, I think. I'm going to buy myself a new set because uh, obviously um, I've got some gaps on this palette now. I haven't got any greens at all and I'm out of a couple of blues and uh, I don't think I've got any black and I'm soon going to run out of white. And um, yeah, so I'm going to be doing a bit more of this. <clears throat> you might want to look at my um, other uh, Facebook group which I've just started just literally uh, yesterday. Um, called Learn to Paint and we're going to be talking about um, this kind of painting on there as well. So doing a painting like this where you're copying one of the old masters can be a very interesting and useful experiment and learning process. And uh, I must admit I've spent quite a lot of time over the years while I've been learning to paint actually trying to do accurate copies of um, famous paintings. Um, Degas, for example, the ballet dancers and so on. They're wonderful training in getting um, the balance of colour right and in how to uh, compose a painting and so on. And uh, there's nothing wrong with copying somebody who um, is considered to be an expert in the field and you will learn a lot. So I heartily recommend it. Even if you don't particularly like the painting, it doesn't really matter. Um, the fact of the matter is that you will learn something. And, and here I've transformed an oil painting by Gauguin, which is one of his typical paintings, he did many, many uh, paintings of this kind of style when he was living near here where I am now in Pont Aven. And uh, he has an interesting use of colour because he uh, tends to like strong colours and he uses a lot of red and green, which always, of course, means that he's likely to have lots of rusty browns and things like that in his paintings. And they tend to be um, not exactly what you'd call realistic, um, but they are challenging because there's not very much um, tonal contrast in the painting. As my daughter said, if that was printed in black and white, you wouldn't really be able to see it. Or if you were colourblind, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's all red and green. Anyway, so that's the purpose for this and also to explore the gouache and see that you can use gouache to paint like um, oil if, uh, if such a thing takes your fancy. It's actually a good way to do a sketch prior to doing an oil painting um, to do the, uh, the sketch in gouache rather than just in watercolour, although of course you can do that too. Um, I want to encourage you to think about using opaque watercolour in your learning process. 
um, you will find that it works completely differently and that's a very mind-opening and uh, can be quite an exciting thing just to break the mold a little bit just to get away from what you always do I'm certainly finding it's helping me so I hope you enjoyed this I know it is hardly a floral and it's certainly not a cute little bird um, but it is a learning process and uh, I wanted to share that with you. So um, if you did enjoy it, could you please, please, please make a comment below. The more engagement we have on the channel, the better. And I will be able to continue to do this and I won't have to go and get a day job. Um, like, comment, subscribe, please, everybody. That's marvellous. You're such great followers. Thank you very much indeed. And I'll let you go now and uh, I'll go and find the next thing on the list to do today. So I'll say bye bye for now and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye everybody. Bye.